Hello, welcome to Mouse Kitchen. I'm James and this is episode seven in my 20 week series all about helping you to do really well in your maths GCSE exam. And this week we are looking at advice from the examiners. What tips and suggestions do they have to help you improve? So I've been busy going through all the old examiners reports and reading through the suggestions that they have for ways in which students could have answered questions better. And I've split those into two broad categories. The first one is kind of a general advice that would be useful for anyone, higher foundation, and you know, it's not specific to a particular question. And that's what I'm gonna start the video with. And then in the second part of the video, I'm gonna look at some very specific things, some specific topics that they suggest people work on. So first of all, the general advice then. So I'm gonna be reading from some notes here. So candidates need to check working for careless errors and to see that the answer given was specifically required by the question. So I actually dealt with this a bit in episode number five, which is all about avoiding mistakes. What they're talking about is people making mistakes typically early on in the paper with the questions that are relatively easy that candidates can do but they just make a silly little mistake, okay? So that's that, but then the second part where it says, and to see that the answer given was specifically required, that is all about people successfully answering a question, but not the question that was asked, okay? So just quickly reading the question, thinking, oh yeah, I know what to do. Calculating something, but actually you, you've answered the wrong thing. So as I say, episode number five, I go into more detail about this, but the, you know there are simple fixes for that second one, which is just to go back after you've answered a question, just reread the question, double check you've answered the right thing. So the next thing that comes up frequently, and this could definitely save you some marks, transcribing errors, okay, within working and when copying from a calculator. So this is people understanding the maths, probably you know potentially getting the answer right except they've just written down a number incorrectly particularly when copying from a calculator so just double check when you're copying numbers down from your calculator go back double check double check yeah i've got it right okay because you don't want to lose you know marks for that kind of thing you've put in all the hard work you've done all the revision it'd be really annoying to lose marks with silly little things like that and then following on from that there is this quote uh, from the chief examiner of Edexcel. It's disappointing that I have to report a decline in the overall standard of presentation of work. This is from 2018, by the way. This is not related to showing working, but about how candidates present their work, legibility. At a basic level, some candidates write fours and nines as to be ambiguous, whilst ones and sevens also present issues for examiners. Candidates who overwrite work then make it illegible. Please cross it out and write it again. Any ambiguity in working or answers in these respects will result in the loss of marks. So listen, we don't want to disappoint this. <laughs> we don't want to disappoint this person again. Okay, so we need to make sure we're writing very clearly so that our work is legible. Okay, they're talking about fours and nines. You know exactly what I'm talking about, don't you? Where that you know they often look very very similar. Same for ones and sevens. But the interesting thing is that they say at the end, any ambiguity in working or answers in these respect, uh, in this respect, will result in loss of marks. That means if it's not clear they won't give you the benefit of the doubt and say, ah, it's probably a four. It, in fact, the opposite. They will just not award you any marks for those. So just be really, really clear when you're writing out those numbers. And then the other thing they mention is about overwriting work. So if you've made a mistake, there is a tendency, I totally understand this, it can be embarrassing and you think, oh, I don't want anyone to see this. That was such a stupid thing to write down. The, but the people marking it, they do not care. They don't even know your name. They're just seeing hundreds of questions. All right, so don't be embarrassed and feel, oh, I've got to scribble through this and no one can read it. Just put one line through it so you can still see what's underneath that line, but they know to ignore it and then just put the correct answer somewhere else. So that's some general advice, but what about some specific things? Well, something that comes up time and again is that people find it difficult to answer those questions where you're asked to explain something or to show that okay so i'd want to talk about that a little bit so here's a typical kind of question mary needs to work out the size of angle x in this diagram she writes x is equal to 63 degrees because base angles of an isosceles triangle are equal mary is wrong 
explain. So if it asks you to show that someone is wrong and to explain or to show whether they are right or wrong and explain, that kind of thing, you don't need to write a long essay. In fact, you hardly need to write anything. In this example, you could just give the correct answer, which is that X is equal to 54 degrees. That is literally all you need to write. So it says explain, but in fact, if you just write the correct answer, you know, that's considered a reasonable explanation. Other things that you could have said are that X isn't the base angle. You can see I've shaded in what is the correct other base angle of that isosceles triangle there. So quite a few of these other specific points are to do with rounding numbers off. Okay, so this next one um, is all about avoiding rounding partway through a question. Let me show you an example of what I'm talking about and then I'll show you how to avoid it. A farmer wants to build a fence around a circular field. The diameter of the field is 23 meters and the fencing costs 13 pounds 50. Work out the cost of the fencing. So we know that we're gonna to have to find the circumference of this circle. And we know that we do that by multiplying the diameter by pi. So we're gonna do 23 multiplied by pi. That gives me 72.2566310. Now, what you might be tempted to do is to round that off and say, okay, well that's 72.26 meters. If I was rounding that to two decimal places, that's the circumference of that circle, 72.26. Now I'm gonna multiply that by 13 pounds 50. That will give me the cost of the fence. And if I do that, that gives me 975 pounds 51 pence. Now, if we hadn't done that rounding halfway through, we could just do 23 pi, times 13 pounds 50 just you could do that all in one line on your calculator so it's worth trying to do everything in one go on your calculator where appropriate anyway in this example i think it is appropriate because if you do that you end up with 975 pounds and 46 pence if, if we round that final answer off anyway so you can see those two answers are very similar 975 pounds 46 and 975 pounds 51, but they are different. And if you've done that rounding off partway through, you may well, you probably would in this example, lose those marks. Moving on, but we're sticking with rounding. This time we're looking at truncating. And the examiners say that people are not doing these truncating questions very well, okay? So if we look at this, 1.85643. Now, if we were asked to round that number off to two decimal places, we would say to ourselves, right, well, it's either going to be 1.85 or I'm going to have to round it up to 1.86. Is that closer to 1.85 or is it closer to 1.86? In this example, it's closer to 1.86. So to two decimal places, that would be 1.86. If we're asked to truncate that number, it just means to chop it off. Okay, so to two decimal places, that number would be 1.85. You basically just chop off, get rid of all the numbers after that second decimal place. So it's it, really, it's much, much easier than rounding. But I think people aren't familiar with, with that word, you know, truncating. And it's a relatively new skill to GCSE. So I think teachers haven't been used to teaching it either. We're just all about rounding numbers off and perhaps haven't focused as much on truncating as we should. Okay, so truncating. Remember that word and it's just dead, dead easy, just chopping numbers off. Then the very final thing I want to look at is also to do with rounding. This is more to do on the foundation paper, but not necessarily exclusively. And it is when you are asked to estimate an answer. Okay, so something like this, 6.8 times 191 divided by 0 0.051. And we are being asked to estimate that. So when you're asked to estimate, that has a particular meaning in this context. And it doesn't mean just to come up with a rough idea or to find a precise answer and then round it off. What they want you to do is to round off the numbers in the question to help you to come up with an answer easily, okay? Typically, you're gonna round them off to one significant figure. So let me show you what that would look like for this particular question. So 6.8, we would round off to seven. 191, we would round off to 200. 0.051, we would round off to 0.05. So we end up with seven times 200 over 0.05. So we end up with 28,000. That's my advice from the examiners, ways in which you can avoid common mistakes that people make in the exams. And it may well be that you can save yourself a few marks 
that are just a few marks that you need to get that grade that you're after. So this could be really, really important for you. So I'd urge you to practice the stuff that I've gone through in this video. Of course, you can do that over at my website, mathskitchen.com. And there's the kind of the running theme throughout all of these videos is that if you want to do really well in your maths GCSE exam, it is all about practicing maths. And you can do that at my website. There's loads of other places you can do that as well. So do keep working hard, keep practicing, any questions you have don't hesitate to leave them in the comments below I do read them all and I do respond to all the comments that and questions that people have thank you very much for joining me today and I look forward to seeing you in episode 8 next week